Planning Commission. And so we ask staff to start to work on developing this highway or um, interchange commercial okay. classification. I know that staff has been working on this for a long, long time. Um, and in the meantime, we decide that we're going to do a citywide master plan. So staff has been working on this, but then we added that to it. Okay. In my opinion, I think we should add this to the whole master planning process so that it's there. It's consistent. Um, I um, don't disagree that we could uh, consider the zoning category for along US 41. There's one item in here that does ca cause me some concern, and it has to do with building height. And it had, I'm not necessarily concerned with building height at if it was out along the interstate. It's do we want a hundred foot tall building next to the homes along Burnt Star Isles? When I know that the in Burnt Star Isles, the residents had um, quite an uproar when uh, someone wanted to build uh, two story buildings along at, at the front between um, uh, Tripoli and US 41. So I think that you know if we were to put a hundred hundred foot tall building next to Comfort Storage, that could be. It might be an issue, so we might need to take a look at well, where do we, where do we do what? And I think that that's where I feel that the citywide master planning process would help add some clarity to some of this, and perhaps uh, perhaps help uh, help us come up with some language that would identify where it's most appropriate. Uh, not that it's I have any issue with some of it. It's just where is it most appropriate, mm -hmm. and how? Howard, one of the uh, objectives of Dover Coal is to look at our land development regulations and decide what, what to recommend. Well, if you decide as a council to take what staff has produced, which is regulations, mm -hmm. draft, and give them to Dover Coal, they're on their way, mm -hmm. as opposed to just handing it over to the Planning Commission and the Land Development Committee. Um, we think now that we have the master plan process started, Let's give it to them. Mm -hmm. See what they think as part of the process. Mm -hmm. I can see that. So I would be in favor of that. Well, I am too. What's so? What's the step with that? Do we run them this, or we just give this to them at this point? Whatever direction you want us to take, we can handle. We can take this package and give it to them as a head start, and they can uh, evaluate it as they're doing the master plan. Lynn, it looks like you. No, I've said what I wanted to say. I mean, okay. I, you know, I think I think there's um, there's a lot of undeveloped property on the 41 corridor from a Kiosta South that could mm -hmm. be developed with a change of mm -hmm. building code, uh, and I and I think it's worthy of discussion. Absolutely. And do you feel though that that needs to be discussed at the at the planning commission next before it goes to Dover Coal? Uh, yeah, I I think this is something that can be brought. This we could, this ordinance could be approved in concept before the 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 master plan even gets done, in my opinion. Uh, okay, Jaha. No, I, I support that. I think we go ahead with this. This is going to be in the pot that Dover Coles will have to deal with anyway. So we could go ahead and move on this. Okay. Okay. Because um, in my view, I think that we're putting the cart before the horse. It's yes, I agree that we could move. But since we have the master planning process, we're going to have Dover Cole look at all this anyway. Do we want to go ahead and and get started on something and approve it when that's that's what Met Dover Cole is going to be doing? Uh, now, this is just an assumption. Just to Lynn's point, this would be because we would have to wait for an end product. This would be maybe another six months, which someone couldn't do anything along the 41 corridor. I mean, if we didn't make these changes, we made a change at least that would this. We'd have the ordinance in place that people could at least consider something. I couldn't hear him. I couldn't hear what he said. I'm sorry. Can you oh, speak I'm, up to the oh, microphone? Oh, Thank I'm, you. I apologize. No, I, I was saying, and this is just an assumption. I'm just assuming that um, part of why we do it now is that um, because we would have to wait until an uh, end product, which may be, let's say, summer or something from Dover Coal, mm -hmm. that would be a time in which this could have already been in place and we could have been utilizing it. In, in terms of the, on the 41 corridor, as opposed to having to wait for them to do it, because this is a good ordinance, and I think it would be a benefit to us. Does, if I might, 
Do, does this ordinance address the 41 corridor, or is it limited mm -hmm. to the interchange? Uh, for the record, Mitchell Austin had the design. Uh, at present in the draft of the ordinance, what um, staff has, um, has done at the dir direction originally of city council was drafted a new zoning classification. That new zoning classification isn't assigned to any particular parcels. So the intent would be to have an alternate zoning classification that could be applied to some geography. Um, okay. There is a draft map uh, that staff has produced where originally it would just encompass the loop properties and those areas along Jones Loop Road towards, um, uh, towards the actual freeway interchange. Um, there has been an alternate map based on direction from the Planning Commission that maybe we, will, we should, con and City Council, that we should consider areas along the US 41 corridor. Mm -hmm. um, so we looked at properties that are adjacent to Burnt Store Isles and Burnt Store Meadows, so those areas immediately adjacent to the, U <coughs> excuse me, to the Jones Loop corridor uh, for possible expansion. But that would be an overlay map that would say these are the areas where this zoning classification can be done. It would be then be up to each individual property owner to then rezone the property. Um, so then city council would have a second bite at the apple to say, yeah, it's appropriate in that location or not. But would you have to make modifications to this draft ordinance um, with the directions that it now should also include the 41 corridor? Uh, we would have to, uh, we still don't have a map that says where this zoning classification is available for use. So there was a discussion about building height. Yes. And if you were talking about it, this ordinance relating to the, the, the loop area, but now you're going to maybe include it in other areas, would you have to go back and make modifications to this ordinance to address its applicability in other geographic areas? Uh, yeah. Definitely. So, definitely. so that's that's where I'm trying to lead to. If you mm -hmm. want to expedite the adoption of this ordinance for the particular area that prompted its consideration, you might want to move forward with this ordinance, and then, if you wanted to apply the general idea of this ordinance, but maybe more specific to the 41 corridor, let's do a different ordinance to address that. And from staff's perspective, the level of complexity that we're ta starting to talk about here, this really is directly related to the master planning process in terms of where certain types of development are and are not appropriate. Mm -hmm. um, so we're really, you know, in some ways putting the cart before the horse, getting that far down the road. Now, if we're just focused on the, the loop area, the original intent of this ordinance was for really going back prior to all these was for the loop annexation area. Um, and if we want to go back to that original intent, apply these rules there, um, then then that that's what we've been planning on for quite some time. Okay. It would seem like since that particular area is one of our hot target areas right mm -hmm. now, maybe we should go ahead and approve this or consideration to go through the process and then at a future date revisit Lynn's two areas that she's suggesting. Yeah, I would agree with that, that we can get started on it as Mitchell has described. So I can you make need a motion a, to that. Do we have to have a motion or are you looking for direction? Let's, let's get a motion so we can have direction. Okay. okay. Well, motion to what, what Debbie said exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I think That's you have to be a little more specific. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, do you have that, Karen? We have the Jones Loop Road it, area first. It's the Jones Loop Road area first is where this is intended, yes. where it was intended originally. Where intended yeah. originally. And then yeah. we'll revisit and we will, the And other we will areas. forward this to the Planning Commission to go through the process. Right. And then in the meantime, this becomes a part of the overall Dover Coal in that Dover Cole can then come back to us as well for other areas. Yeah. Well, and, and then we the second part will be to revisit what we may want to see along 41 and 17. Yes. 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 Okay. I'll and your that. motion is? <laughs> <laughs> My motion is to approve the use of this ordinance with the intended location. And, and of Jones Loop? Of Jones Loop. Thank you. 
And I'll second that. Okay, there's been a motion and a second to approve this for the, as applica applicable to the Jones Loop area. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. Okay, so we will start the process. Start the process. And it's going to be a part of the Dover Cole discussion. Yeah, I mean, they'll, they'll have the information. Absolutely. Sure. Absolutely. Okay. Great. Making progress. Um, so we're done with the, the regular agenda items. We'll move into recommendations from city officers, and we'll start with the city manager. You have an item regarding per, the succession uh, plan. Yeah, per some of our uh, performance objectives, one of them was to present to you a city manager succession plan. So uh, in front of you are some ideas that uh, you may want to consider. Let me just uh, highlight them. We have to assume something. So let's assume a city manager retirement uh, December of 2020, which is the end of the sales tax program. Let's assume that date and we can work our way back because depending on when that date is, you can always work your way back. One option is to hire a search firm, which many communities do. Uh, the cost for that search firm could range anywhere from fifteen to twenty-five thousand, depending on what you ask that firm to do. Uh, if you ask that firm to do everything, what that firm will do is develop a position brochure by interviewing all the council members. They will then advertise that brochure. They will uh, get applicants in. Some they already know. They have a list of applicants. Others they'll get in. They will then match those applicants best to what you, you're looking for in a new city manager. Um, they will bring you a list from which you will then pare that list down to a more manageable number to interview. They will assist in the interview process. They will coordinate everything. You will then rank your candidates. They will then assist in putting an employment contract together and uh, bring to you a contract for a new city manager. If you assume a retirement date of December 2020, you would probably want to start that process with the search firm uh, somewhere around September, October 2019. That gives you um, nine months to a year to go through a process with a search firm, have somebody on board. Depending on who selected, that person may already be working somewhere else, so may need to give notice to that community. So you could have somebody on board uh, no later than uh, uh, October 1st or sooner of 2020. And you could either have that person work uh, side by side with the current manager or you could ask the current manager to leave and uh, the, the new city manager will take place. Sometimes managers, you know, it's not necessary for the current manager to hang around not always happens. Um, so that's one, one way to do it. Another way to do it is have our human resources division handle the entire process. If they do, the cost would come down. Um, human resources handled the process back in 2004 and 2005. And those costs would probably be somewhere around $5,000, maybe a little more, because we would still need to hire a, uh, a consulting firm to do a background check. They're out there. They do background and criteria. Uh, but with human resources handling the process, you could probably shave off about four months, maybe, of the, of the process. Uh, in the meantime, as part of our succession planning, um, uh, there may be some uh, uh, in-house people that may be looking for career advancement. It gives an opportunity to see if... Uh, this is the type of, uh, of job that they, a position that they really want. Uh, I know we rotate uh, when, I'm in, when I'm not around, when I take vacation, we rotate uh, who's gonna be the city manager and we will continue to do that. Um, so maybe even we might have uh, an in-house person sit up here even next year to see how, how well uh, they, they might be adapted to the position because we always like to have um, in-house folks have the opportunity to advance if they want to. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and we've been doing fairly well with that. So those are some ideas for you. Uh, and we're open for any suggestions that you may have. I mean, I personally think we did a good job with um, the police chief and communications director. I, I, I think our HR department can do this. And, 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 and I do like the idea of also looking inside as well. But I, I think that we have the capacity to do this role. Lynn? Well, first of all, you're not allowed to leave, so we shouldn't <laughs> even have this discussion. You're here until we, we tell you you have to leave. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. That could be but, tomorrow. Um, I don't know. No, I, I, <laughs> You no, know, you can't do that. I know. Um, but, I mean, I agree with Jaha. I think um, we certainly owe it to our employees to explore that option, but we also owe it to the citizens of the community to explore options outside of the community and solicit resumes at, at the time that it becomes necessary. Um, I think that we could certainly have our HR department handle this as they did in 2004. It certainly makes the most sense to me. It would be a huge cost savings to the city, which I also am in very strong support of. So I'd like to see us go that avenue. I concur with you. Okay, because I, I, I have a different twist to that. Um, and I know that Howard and Mikhail gave a lot of assistance to HR in our recent searches that we have gone through. Um, and um, I think that this is gonna be an extremely desirable place to come. And I'm concerned, uh, you know, not that our HR department can't do it, but do they have the, the time to do it, to handle it? Um, the, the, the fee that an outside firm is um, charging isn't really that significant. You know, yeah, it could be save us maybe $20,000, but would we be able to, would they be able to help us in this process? So, um, just, you know. I gotta respectfully disagree with you on this one. <laughs> you know, I just, because I, I think that given that we don't, won't have Howard participating in the process, are they gonna be able to narrow all this down? I, granted, they will have access to all of the, the same, some of the same, some of the same uh, resources, the places where they can advertise for this open position, so. It should also be noted, um, for those who may not know, um, the, the city manager and the city clerk are the only two city employees that report directly to council. Um, Howard and Karen hire all the staff that works for the city at the level, next level down and, and so on. So this city council will be involved in this process at, at the time that it becomes necessary. Absolutely. Yep. We'll Howard. Be. Now we have had a tradition over the past 13 and a half years that when we hire department directors, um, even if there are in-house candidates, they do compete with the outside sector. Um, so if we do have an in-house candidate, um, if you choose to seek uh, applicants elsewhere, that person could compete, just like department directors. Mm -hmm. Some communities don't do that. Mm -hmm. Some communities, uh, like right near here, they just never did advertisements for their county managers. They just selected one of their assistants and moved them right in. Mm -hmm. um, so um, we have time to, yes. to, to work this out. Um, as I said, uh, uh, if you wanna use the HR division, they're very capable and uh, they'd be willing to help. It's up, uh, I don't know if we need to make a decision today but if the direction is mm -hmm. for HR to gear up in the future, um, we can give them that direction if you want. We also might see certain staff members rise to the surface during you the may. citizen's master it's plan process. It's possible. It's possible. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, it's yes. possible. So a lot of things could happen between now and the time we actually Absolutely. have to make a decision, but it's, it's good to have the discussion now. You will have plenty of time uh, when I give notice. You have plenty of time. Well, and the, the conversation I had with Howard was if we have a hundred and some plus resumes coming in, um, that was something that I know Howard and Phil and I'm not sure who else um, really processed. And so I don't know what it was like back in 2004 when it was, they were, you know, interviewing 
and, and subsequently made an outstanding decision to hire Howard um, to join this community. But I'm just, you know, that's some cool. of my concern is, just, is not that the skill is not there, it's the capacity. You will have a lot of applicants for this job. So I think it's given that we don't need to make that decision right now, um, but I'm glad you're bringing it up for us so that we can be watching. We have a time and, frame, we have mm -hmm. a timeline. Okay. Okay. Good. Okay, um, city attorney. I have nothing further, thank you. Nothing further? No. Well, happy Hanukkah. Thank you very much. Yes, you're welcome. Um, city clerk. Yes, um, the first thing I wanna say is that um, I wanna thank uh, Jeff Masters. He's the um, chair of the building board. He took home the gavel and refinished it. I don't know if you noticed, but um, being the chair of the building board, he noticed that it was getting a bit um, nicked, and um, so he volunteered to take <laughs> that home. Zealous committee take chairman. It nice again. So, <laughs> just want to thank him for doing that. <laughs> Show and tell. Thought it was very nice I, of him to offer. No, I have, I have, I have uh, not used the gavel that long. So um, I did not pay attention to that particular aspect of the you gavel. You weren't the culprit in putting all the nicks in it. But, <laughs> <laughs> but it uh, certainly does look lovely. <laughs> okay. And thank him for that. <laughs> I will. Moving on to boards and committees then. Um, under vacancies, we have a three-year term as an alternate on the Board of Zoning Appeals, a three-year term as an alternate on the Historic Preservation Advisory Board, and an unexpired term as an alternate on code enforcement. Under nominations, we have two three-year terms on the Planning Commission. We have two eligible applicants. Um, if you would like to nominate and appoint, you may do so. Nom motion. Nominate and appoint Mr. Como and Mr. Weiner. Is there a second? Second. There's <clears throat> a motion to nominate, appoint, and a second. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Those opposed, they are appointed. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Um, also under nominations, we have an unexpired term on the building board. Um, we have we do have just one eligible applicant, so if you'd like to nominate a point for that as well. Nominate and appoint Mr. Brox. Second. There's been a nomination uh, to or a nomination to appoint to appoint, I guess, uh, and a second. Um, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed. And Mr. Brox is nominated and appointed. Thank you. Thank you. And then um, lastly, uh, we do have an unexpired term on the Punta Gorda Housing Authority. We have three eligible applicants for nomination for that seat. Nominate all. Thank you. Okay. And that's all I have. Perfect. Um, so under policy and legislation, uh, tomorrow at nine o'clock is the Charlotte County Legislative Delegation meeting and all council members are um, certainly welcome to be there as we make our request, or officially make our request, although it, it has been submitted, but this is the, the formal aspect of the presentation. And it's a good opportunity because there will be a lot of the other uh, county commissioners will be there, uh, school board members, other nonprofits, and everybody who's who is making a request. So you'll see a long list, it's not just governmental entities, but a long list of, of people that will be there. We will be up front, usually, I think it might be the county commission that goes first and then the school board and then we follow, but um, so we're pretty much up front and then you're free to go or, or you can stay and listen um, however you uh, want. Um, it is informative uh, to get to see the, the process in action and I would welcome anybody to actually come in and watch the process in action. So, uh, the other thing I ha made a note of, and it was because of an agenda item, um, and that was the agenda item under the budget transfer where we said we've been uh, we put money every year, a small amount of money into this fund, that was for the budget transfer for the storm re uh, reconstruction. Um, I remember as a council member making a request that we consider tucking some money away every year buy more of the nice Christmas wreaths that we have downtown with the candles in them. And because I noticed um, last year at this time, 
uh, we have the, the snowflakes that are aging, and I know our public works does a great job at keeping things working beyond their typical life expectancy. But I, as I notice um, driving in different store aisles, I notice sometimes um, one of them is up, it's lit, and sometimes it's not totally lit, and it kind of varies. And, and um, so as we were discussing this, it was just something I wanted to, to find out. Are we tucking any money away, or how can we proceed in the future to, um, what, what do we need to do? Because these, some of these snowflakes are getting pretty old. We would have to look at the public works budget and set aside an account uh, specifically for this person purpose to replace um, ornaments. I know they were not they were not inexpensive um, uh, to purchase, but Kristen Simeon from Finance again. Um, Public Works does have, under facilities maintenance, does have a holiday decorations line item that they currently um, do have. And I know at the end of the year, if they do have extra funds, they always request to carry it over for the following year because they never know which years they're going to need a little more. Mm -hmm. But um, we can check into that and maybe it just maybe needs to be increased a little bit or set aside in one particular year to do a little bit more than is normal, but they do have money set aside for replacement of some of the holiday decorations each year. Mm -hmm. yeah, it, it's, it's not a whole lot. It's not a whole yeah. lot. Oh, I understand. <laughs> and I know that, you know, for us to try to replace all of the snowflakes would be quite costly. Yes. Um, but I know how beautiful the, the wreaths are. Um, and I know I've been asked by our residents, why don't we have somebody do this for us rather than have public works staff actually put these up and it's uh, we did get a bid I think at the time I recall um, yes okay. for having a company come and do that and it was like really expensive it was um, we did get a bid it was, and it was very expensive for public works staff to do this as they have time available it really does help us budget wise so it's I'm sure that they enjoy helping as well yeah now uh, we have to start earlier than what a company would do. So and it takes longer to dismantle. Yes, yes, it does. That's okay. But That's okay. But it does save dollars. Yes, it does, and we're all about doing that. So I just wanted to ask okay. that question. Okay, we'll look at our budget. Okay. Thank you. Um, and then the Christmas parade is on Saturday, mm -hmm. and I know, Debbie, you're going to have to go to Cincinnati, I believe it is. Yes. I have watch. a command performance to watch the Nutcracker. My granddaughter is dancing in the Cincinnati Children's Ballet, oh, so awesome. I'm going to take a pass on the parade. <laughs> so Jaha and and uh, Lynn and I will be there, and we'll get a we'll get a full yeah we'll throw fire truck full yeah we'll we'll be we'll be ready and raring. So I already provisioned. <laughs> 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 okay, council member comments. Nothing. Does everyone have have a good holiday season? What, what meeting? Are we are meeting? We have one meet on the nineteenth. So September almost 19. holiday yeah. season. Yeah. yeah. Well, starting from Hanukkah from Sunday. Yes. Okay. So let's be done. Yes. Yes. Happy Hanukkah for those who are celebrating. Yes. Likewise. Okay, Debbie. I would like to say that I thought Friday night's party was absolutely spectacular. I was so impressed as I looked around at all the elves and I saw familiar faces of our staff. What a great job you guys all did, and thank you so much for your time and your talent and putting on such a fabulous party. Thanks. Yes, they, they, it was a great um, team effort. Even so. the Grinch. Even the Grinch. Even yeah. the Grinch. <laughs> what a performance. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, now we're at the time for citizens' comments, and you can comment on anything that you want. You've got three minutes. Thank you very much, Wendy Young, uh, Raven Court. I just want to um, thank you for your careful deliberation of the assessment method for Buckley's Pass. I'd also like to reiterate that I believe we have an assessment method that exists, and that's to um, the method that we use to assess everything in PGI canals and that even though an economist at some point made a recommendation and did a lot of work and was paid a consulting fee to carve out water access units and the Buckley Pass, I don't believe that that's justification for going down that road. 
I still recommend that the council re-examine the whole idea of water access units, for one thing, and also the, um, the use of a special benefit area, which many of us don't believe is a benefit. So thank you for your consideration and happy holidays. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to? You have their three minutes. Hi, <clears throat> Pat Niles, uh, District 2, uh, Gateway Point. Um, it was, it's been mentioned about the uh, journey to the future January 7th at the event center, and I ex suggest all go to that particular event. Uh, Victor Dover, uh, which is, he is the head of um, the consulting group that is going to be so involved in our area, and uh, you get a chance to hear what his views are and his vision. That's one of the things I've always tried to draw out. What is the vision of those who are indifferent, whether in positions or business? What is your vision of what you're seeing so we can understand what that vision is as you put it all together? Um, with regard to, to Howard, um, I hope whoever you, uh, in the process that you do have for the, um, uh, the city manager, um, I'm just share with you when GE had a very capable manager leave and perhaps they could have improved their process before he left because they ended up um, having to rehire him out of retirement and because he came back, he wanted more money and they paid him an increase in salary to come back because he was so vital to that position. So I suggest when I, I heard over here, if, if you, I kind of like to give out marks and I, Howard's always gotten A pluses from me. And so it's gonna be tough to fill his spot. And I suggest that I know that um, managers like their own style and I appreciate that too. But I think a manager also, when you're coming into a position like here in, in Punta Gorda in the city council, there's a knack to it. And um, that person, whoever does get that job, I hope, I thought there was some mention that October and then January, I hope you give that uh, new person more time to observe and watch the city council, to observe how the council how you all react to the citizens and how do the citizens react to you. You had a tough day this morning. Up in Binghamton, New York, it never would have happened. And the response would never have been the same. People argue at the library in Binghamton, New York with the police there. And I'm just simply saying we have a gift here. So I, I hope that there's that time that this new manager will really be able to see how you all work together every single one of you, including David as the attorney. And I'm very interested in watching what happens this year coming up, just as I have in the past. Those who served on the city council in the past have given a lot of time and effort and thought and skill into the jobs. And I wish Debbie well here in your new position. Uh, and I'm gonna run out of time here, but I mainly came here to talk about if we ever do in Punta Gorda address uh, um, treatments, treatment for those in recovering here. It came up earlier. Jaha gave a very excellent presentation for all of us, including the city council, which affected the direction that the city council was gonna go at that time with regard to uh, a sober house in our downtown area. So it's a new, dis uh, carrying on a discussion, it'll come. I'm hoping that uh, Charlotte County uh, commissioners will also be involved so that it's a view of the whole entire county instead of a responsibility or what for Punta Gorda. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, with respect to that last comment, uh, Lisa and I are, are beginning to work um, on making some type of clarification revision to bring back to you and then at that point you can kind of also give us further direction as to um, uh, whether you want to you know how you want to make changes um, but um, clearly there's a need to readdress that as it's presently written in our code has that gentleman come back to the city no no mm -mm. are there any other citizens comments 
Seeing none. We are adjourned.